What's up, binge watchers? Welcome to our review of The Queen's Gambit, a mini series created by Scott Frank and Alan Scott, now streaming on Netflix. Now, if you're new to our channel, consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to us for weekly reviews of movies, TV shows, and video games. Now, Kevin, tell us what is this mini series all about? The Queen's Gambit is a riveting adaptation of the 1983 novel by Walter Tavis. It follows the story of Elizabeth Harmon, this young child prodigy who starts playing chess in the orphanage and her rise to play on the world stage. Now, genius comes with the cost. And Phil, what do you think about this miniseries? I am just really a sucker for chess movies because growing up, I grew up in a household where everyone loves chess. When I was young, I even read books about the games of Bobby Fischer and as you know Kevin I am a gamer and one of my frequently played games at our computer was Chess Master 9000 <laughs> uh, I kept playing that game so much when I was a child and currently I am also a fan of Magnus Carlsen the current world champion who was also considered a genius during his younger days uh, I'm a fan of that not to brag but I also consider myself as an above average chess player because of that back <laughs> now going into our review because of that background I absolutely love this series the same way that I love the Queen of Katwe and Pawn Sacrifice and I have to say out of all the media regarding chess that I've watched this might be my favorite because first off Anya Taylor-Joy is so mesmerizing in this performance. Actually, she carries the entire miniseries for me. Her facial expressions, the subtlety in her acting, knowing when to overreact or not to react so much at all is just nothing short of amazing. And the story, the story is actually really, really interesting because as you said, genius comes with a cause. We see her at the very beginning as this young prodigy learning chess and just obliterating the competition along the way uh there's a scene here where i am absolutely sure is based on what bobby fisher did when she played a room full of chess players she played them all yeah. by herself simultaneously mm -hmm. bobby fisher did that in real life so did magnus carlsen and i'm absolutely sure that that scene was based on that and that's one of my favorite scenes here the supporting cast includes the likes of harry Melling from the Harry Potter film series and also Thomas Brody Sangster from the Game of Thrones series. They were really integral to the plot here and they were great. Bill Camp who plays Mr. Schraebel, this janitor at the very beginning who taught her how to play chess was a very compelling character despite not having so much to say. Actually his exposure was just in the beginning but all throughout this series you just can't forget that this character is behind the scenes. With regards to the chess sequences here it's really hard to shoot chess matches and make it compelling make it interesting because chess is really a game that's just really you're only using your mind you're only moving pieces on the board but somehow like the other films that i mentioned earlier they did it they did a great job at making those scenes engaging yeah. and again kevin i just love this series yeah i know you're going to love this series and since you bragged in the beginning i felt like there's a need for me to <laughs> brag since we're doing this i also love chess yeah. growing up yeah you mostly played yeah. with your computer i mostly played with friends though none of them are brand masters coming from someone who played Ages, to see that the show doesn't really hold back in the technical jargons, the Sicilian defense, the Nydorf variation. Yeah. I mean, this show makes this game, which is very cerebral and at times esoteric, it's a game where it won't really appeal much to the public unless you have a knowledge of chess so i love that the show really honors the sport because this is part a sports drama apart from being a character study and the way they made the chess matches here you're right the sequences are very electric and it's never the same like for some of the matches you can hear the voiceovers of elizabeth detailing her strategy there are some matches that can be infuriating and some are pure sex See, because of how all these intellectual strategies came into play and moreover when we get into the Russia you see different strategies because 
you know, the Americans are very individualistic in their approach, then the Russians are more of a group effort. And to see all those subculture coming to life, that chess subculture, I think that's one of the greatest strengths of this series because I am drawn on how they see these winners as celebrities. We have these magazines, we have a community that really appreciates this sport because it's not as popular as most physical games but you know there is a fan base for this and the way director scott frank lays it all out with the help of his cinematographer all those split screens all those different techniques especially this is also a story about drug addiction so we see some digital effects whenever elizabeth takes these tranquilizers and she envisions all those chess pieces hanging on the ceiling one of the visually engaging aspects of the show it's a recurring theme Anya Taylor Joy oh my god I first saw her on Split and the first characteristic that I've noticed is her eyes because her eyes are so big she can really yeah. use that as an instrument for her most of her acting so in that movie you can see her her scared her trembling and in here she used yeah. it, it to a more nuanced effect because I would like to think of chess as a part poker as a professional player like Beth you can't give away your excitement when you're about yeah. to checkmate your opponent but at the same time from a cinematic standpoint you don't want to have a character that's just just this bland facial expression so those little intricacies in her eyes you can see desperation you can see anger all help with those voiceovers and the effective musical scoring I think it really makes a compelling one Watch. You yeah. mentioned a lot of actors here. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Everyone is on their top of their game. I wished we had more scenes with Bill Comp and also Jolene played by Moses Ingram. But you know, as a whole, this is a very well fleshed show because it's about a sports drama, a character study, biopic about drug and alcohol addiction. You know, would normally see those elements in a biography, but I think the show takes unexpected moves. Also, I just like to add that Anya Taylor-Joy, I think you already know this, she's been casted as Furiosa, young Furiosa in the upcoming yep. Mad Max movie. Once that movie gets released, I mean, her career will definitely skyrocket. And I would like to remember this show as her, like, her final star-making moment before she eventually gets recognized as an A-lister by more public viewers. And sorry, I might have to add, the younger kid who plays Anya Taylor-Joy, first episode, she did most of it just on that episode one alone because that's, like, the make or break if you're going to watch the whole entire series, right? And she did encompass all the attributes, the subtle attributes of Anya Taylor-Joy. So I have to commend that young girl as well. You mentioned this, that chess fans will definitely enjoy this because they can relate to most of what is happening because there is a specific audience for this that's going to enjoy this so much more than the others. And I'm glad that we are part of that. <laughs> um, for example, at the, at the very first episode, the most basic of basics at her very first chess match, you see Mr. Schrabel doing this maneuver and immediately <laughs> if you are uh, chess player, you know it immediately. It's the four moves. Uh, we know it as the four moves immediately. And I was like, come on, don't fall for that. It's four moves. Again, when they show the Sicilian and when they show these other maneuvers, it's really exciting for me because as I mentioned, when I was a kid, I was reading these chess books, the games of Bobby Fischer, Spassky, those guys. Even my uncle even uses some of these moves on me. And there I was, I'm a child and I don't know how to handle those. So when they were shown on screen i was so so excited this series wouldn't have hooked us if isla johnston at the very first episode wasn't great at what she did i agree with you wholeheartedly she carried that first episode all throughout and made us very interested and invested after the first episode of this series and again uh, you touched upon this another thing that i love about this is there are themes here uh feminism is a very prevalent theme because for most of 
the park. She's the only woman chess player that's going up at the higher echelons, going towards yeah. the grandmaster. And there are certain points in this series where people are mentioning her gender and how unusual it was. There's that female empowerment theme there that women can also do these things. It also showed her struggle with alcoholism, drug addiction. This is all throughout just a very, very layered series. I guess my only issue here would be at the latter part of this series, some characters who was introduced very early on in the series or mid in the series suddenly pop up back into her life. And I just think that they could have integrated those characters back into her life more smoothly because some of it felt a bit abrupt. But before I conclude, uh, I also want to mention that the musical score, uh, I almost forgot to mention the musical score. The musical score here is just oh so good. Just oh so good. Especially during those chess sequences where she's thinking um, this is probably the best series or movie that I've seen with regards to chess. Anya Taylor-Joy is an absolute delight. I am excited to see her shoot up into stardom and I am so excited that she's going to play Furioso because as you know Mad Max Fury Road uh, I'm absolutely crazy for that movie mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to that so Queen's Gambit I love it if you're a chess enthusiast you should go see this I am going to give this series a 4.5 out of 5 stars this is a period piece and part of nailing a period mm. piece is the musical score so I definitely agree with you on that and also the production design you know I would liken the production design on the same level with Netflix other Emmy award winning show The Crown they need to be strict on that historical production design but in here you can see that there are some modern touches but they never feel too anachronistic for me of course there's a globe trotting aspect to here so you are taking too many things different places the las vegas russia but what remains is i love that the portrait community here is very progressive the issue of her being the only female in the game is mentioned early on but as she continues to prove herself her competitors realize that it has nothing to do with gender she was just a gifted yeah. individual and that's what i really appreciate along with that some of the competitors become friends and potential romantic interest so that's also an interesting aspect to her life because part of being a genius you know she suffers so much not just relying on alcohol to drown her loneliness and i just would like to touch because one of her mother's parting words is that if you're independent you can stand to be alone somewhere along in the lines of that and she has taken that mantra into herself i just want to say that i am really fascinated by her relationship with her foster mom played by marielle heller yep. at some point it seemed like she was using her and her using her but you know it eventually yeah. grew into something more meaningful and i think that these characters have much more in common that they are not appreciated mostly because of their gender bias but you know for me this show really excels when she was just all alone because we see a lot of moments of her with her friends living this glamorous and sophisticated life that comes with fame but you know the series shines when anya taylor joy was just alone with her thoughts whether it's contemplating the next chess move or just contemplating thing in life in general on how much she have missed out so yes it is a very layered character study a gripping sports drama and i won't be surprised if this will eventually win a best miniseries in the upcoming emmys next year i'm going to give this a solid five out of five and that's it for our review of queen's gambit if you like this video hit that like button and subscribe to our channel also let us know what you think in the comment sections below thank you so much for watching until then see you on the next one bye bye